Hi there. In this video, we are going to see some of the most common issues that one experiences when programming or creating circuits and projects on Arduino. So this is the Arduino Uno board that I have in my hand, which is the most popular one, which uh, many of us use for making projects. And we'll see what are the different issues that we face when experimenting with it and some of the remedies as well. So let's get started. The very first issue that we face and which is the most obvious one as well and that is using a faulty clone board now what i mean to say by this is arduinos are not manufactured just by the company arduino but it is also manufactured by probably more than thousand different manufacturers across the world because of its open source nature and there is nothing wrong in it that's what has made arduinos to be very popular and easy to reach to every homes across the world. Uh, it has made Arduino boards cheaper as well because the ones which are manufactured in Italy or the ones which are manufactured in USA are quite expensive across the world. Whereas if you manufacture it locally, they come quite cheaper. But sometimes not all the manufacturers are manufacturing using the highest quality components and sometimes you will have an Arduino board which is faulty. Now it may not be faulty entirely the board in itself will be completely good the issues will be in the quality of components used because i'm saying this because i have faced it myself multiple number of times and you don't even know it probably you ordered a bunch of boards from china uh, let's say you wanted 100 for your workshop or your maker space or something like that and you will find that some of the boards just don't work at all the most common issue that i have faced is not having bootloader ideally every arduino board has an atmega 328 ic and which has a, an arduino bootloader installed into it because of that bootloader program you can download program over the serial cable if you don't have the bootloader in your ic then you will not be able to download the programs using computer the second most uh, common issue that i myself have faced is having a faulty USB to UART IC. Multiple manufacturers use multiple different type of designs. Some of them use CP2102, some of them use PL2303, some of them use FT232. These are different uh, USB to UART IC names. And the official Arduino boards make use of Arduino or sorry, an AVR IC itself as a USB controller. If you don't have a good USB chip or the USB chip is damaged, then it will not be detected at all. Sometimes the, the connector is also faulty and sometimes the cable is also faulty. The issue is apparent when um, you can just, the only thing you need to do is try to change cable. Even after changing cables and even if uh, you're using a working cable, if the board is not detected, it's better to simply replace it because you're going to do a number of experiments onto it and you don't want to fiddle around just with a faulty board. This is the most common and the most prominent issue. The next one is the upload errors. Again, the upload errors are basically another aspect of faulty clone boards. What happens is many times the USB IC is not right. Many times the cable is not right. Many times the bootloader got damaged because of some experiments. And you will face this very common issue. AVR2 sticky 500 receive programmer is responding error. This is also apparent when the USB to UART IC is not able to give a proper reset signal to the microcontroller IC because of which the microcontroller is not resetting and therefore the bootloader is not working. In many many such issues or in many such errors all you need to do is you simply need to keep this reset button that you see over here pressed when you're downloading the code you will detect a motion or you, you will detect a movement on the txrx led that is when the pc is trying to connect with the arduino board at that point you need to release this reset button it means you are giving it a manual reset and you are pushing it manually into bootloader mode that solves this issue but again if this is persistent and if you are facing this a number of different times it's better to replace the board in this case as well Third issue is mostly related to design. That is 
if you connect accidentally some of the input signals many times we are using arduinos with analog sensors digital sensors switches relays and whatnot interfacing uh, things or interfacing circuits if you accidentally connect something to pin number zero or pin number one then you will not be able to download program into your microcontroller board because pin zero and pin one are the rx and tx pins of controller which are used to accept the data coming from pc and download into the ic now you may say this is not fair because i just have 20 pins with arduino Uno and i need to use them all fine go on use them if possible try to make sure that you can remove pin 0 and 1 interfaces with a jumper or something on your board or just if you are experimenting additionally just remove those two pins download the code and put them back in if you put them back in there is no issues there is no worry at all so this is how you can simply mitigate this error or issue next issue is a brownout issue and this is a little bit difficult to explain that's why there is no visualization on this slide so let me tell you you might see that you are using arduino uno with a servo motor or with a dc motor and you have written a sequence of some motions to perform but as soon as the motor starts uh, the same first maybe one or two motions are repeating itself why that happens that happens because let me take you to this schematic that happens because many a times what we do is we usually take for example a single supply for example there is a battery that you are using uh, maybe that battery is good it's a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt power supply and then what you are doing is from the same 12 volt power supply you are building a 5 volt power supply or you are giving uh, it as an input to arduino like this let's say this is uh, power supply 5 volt power supply and then what happens is the 5 volt from this supply is going to arduino and then the ground and this ground is common now what happens is if you are giving this same supply to let's say dc motor controller now what happens is if your supply is rated let's say it's a 12 volt one the power supply and if it is not able to give so let's say this is rated 12 volt and let's say the writing on that power supply or that smps says one ampere now if you are using a configuration like this and this goes to arduino's power supply over here what happens is when the motor turns on when the motor rotates it immediately takes a big surge of current and if this supply is not really good even if the motor is taking let's say 800 900 milliamps of current that gives a big pull on this power supply and the power supply output eventually also drops down so the 5 volt output which was basically 5 volt steady supply before now drops down immediately to somewhat like 2 volt 3 volt and it can happen for a short amount of time mind me it can happen for a short amount of time when the motor turns on when the relay turns on but in that short period of time the arduino may go into reset because it has a protection built into it called brownout reset Although programmable, most microcontrollers will fail to continue their program if the supply voltage drops below 2 volt or 1 volt. And this is very common. It happens with most of us and it has happened with me many times. So make sure you use a power supply which is a really, really good one and which gives the current it requires. And you can never be sure of it. So just make sure you use good branded power supplies or best what I do is use transformers as much as possible. If you are using batteries, make sure the batteries are fully charged. This issue will not come many times on batteries because batteries are tend to have that capacity to give more current on uh, when required. But not with the switching mode power supply, definitely not with those cheap adapters that you get for 9 volt or 12 volt DC supply. Next in this line of issues is pin number A6 and A7 on Nano. Now why I am talking about Nano? Because Arduino Unos are good for experimentation, but when you are creating a project, when you are creating a PCB, I myself have used Arduino Nano many times or rather it would be good to say most of the times if I am creating a project, I use Arduino Nano. 
reason because it is friendly to be installed on a an IC, uh, on a board like an IC and you can also download programs onto it you can do pretty much everything that you can do an Arduino Uno but with a smaller form factor and which is much more friendly to be used as an IC you can detach it from a project now the issue happens that is we get to see that okay Arduino Uno has what a0 to A5 6 analog inputs and pin D0 to D13 14 digital IOs all in all total 20 pins whereas Arduino Nano says it has total 22 pins why because it has got A0 to A7 not just A0 to A5 but A0 to A7 pins but these two additional pins A6 and A7 they are analog only pins they are not digital inputs not digital outputs you cannot use them as digital R. So it has happened with me. I didn't check data sheet and I tried to create a project and A6, A7 was just not budging because it will never do that. It, it will not blink. It will not generate logic high, logic low. It will not even accept your uh, digital input. So make sure to keep in mind that pin A6 and A7 on Arduino Nanos are analog in only. Next is not enabling the pull-up resistor or connecting an external pull-down resistor. Remember, Arduino Unos do have an internal pull-up resistor which needs to be enabled when you make that pin work as input pin. With that mode, if you use this line, pin mode to comma input underscore pull-up, you can directly connect a button to an Arduino pin against ground. If you don't enable internal pull-up, then you need to connect an external resistor like this. If you do enable internal pull-up, then you don't need this resistor. But consider a situation where you have not connected this resistor, you have connected the switch like this, but you have not enabled the internal pull-up. Then your switch input may not work. So make sure if you are using buttons or switches of any kind, if it's an industrial project, it's always better to simply go for connecting external pull-up or pull-down resistors or at least enable the internal pull-up resistors and connect your button against ground. Next issue is software serial and it's very interesting one and uh, it, it needs to be a special mention because we all tend to use software serial. The documentation says it's so simple, you just choose any two pins, they will act as you want for you, blah, blah, blah and we get excited and we start using it. But there are a number of different things or to be considered with software serial. The most important, you know, even if you don't read this whole sheet, the only thing that you take away is please try to use software serial on as low baud rate as possible. For example, 9600 or 9600 is okay. You can use software serial on this. Secondly, try to use software serial for peripherals where a loss of communication is not fatal. It's, it's, it's not going to cause any problems. If you ask me, in my experimentation, I always use software serial when I was just receiving data, a bunch of data, or sometimes just sending data. I have to send something over Bluetooth and I don't care about receiving. Not that it cannot do send and receive both. It cannot do it at the same time, that's for sure. It can do both, but if you're using that and if you're using serial port as well, then it will create issues that you will not be able to comprehend because the software serial does everything on a blocking call. Then you are doing software transmit, software receive, everything is blocked. All other interrupts are blocked. The serial communication, the UART is also blocked. So if you receive some data on serial port and if you are sending some data on software serial at that time, the data received on the serial port may be lost. Make sure you do not use software serial as your primary communication channel. Use it only as a secondary one. And if your system, if your code requires you to use software serial or multiple UART at all, then better to go with a higher version of Arduino like Arduino Mega, which has got multiple serial ports. That's software serial. Next, again, it's very common. Many of us don't understand or don't uh, consider this, but there are library conflicts a number of different times. If you have noticed, if you go to Arduino and if you open the ID, and if you see the library manager, it has a built-in library manager. But before that, we used to simply copy a library and paste it into the library's folder. Now, what happens is it can easily create conflict between the libraries installed from here and the libraries that you have manually put 
somewhere because they use two different locations. Library conflict can also occur because of the same name of the libraries. It can also occur because some libraries are not supported on some controllers. It's not that you install something for Arduino Uno and it will directly as it is work for a higher version of Arduino like an ARM controller based Arduino or something like that. No. So you have to make sure to use the libraries and see what boards it supports to. If possible, try to uh, remove the duplicates. Uh, you have to just go to your libraries folder and delete the duplicated library files. It's always preferred if you are working on critical projects, then keep your libraries locally into the project folder and just include them from that whole location when you're writing your code instead of just referring to including from the default libraries folder in Arduino. That is library conflict. Number nine is again i have seen this uh, mostly students do this mistake because their primary intention is to get the project finished as early as possible and we have also seen that it is very popular these days to use an lcd module which is communicated using i2c a small i2c based lcd module is available it interfaces with just four lines and you can easily get started with it the thing is Protocols like I2C and SPI, they were meant to be something like inter-IC protocol or serial peripheral interface. They are meant to be used on board. It means one IC from the board communicating with some other IC on the board where the paths are short, probably as close as possible or at least one board. The protocols were never meant rather to carry signals on wire. There are a number of different issues happening because uh, when you carry, carry the signals on wire. The baud rate is high. The wires may tend to lose the voltages. They may increase the capacitance. There may be a number of different issues which may cause you the signal integrated, which may cause the data loss, which may cause LCD not working properly. So if you must use wires, physical wires from board to somewhere onto ITC, then make sure you keep them as short as possible. Same goes for SPI. Ideally, single board. Manufacture a board yourself, design a PCB yourself, put an Arduino Nano onto it and keep your I2C or SPI peripherals on the same boards and you should be good. Otherwise, it is going to give you a number of different issues that you will just spend hours trying to figure out on. The last in this list is holding the Arduino board in your palms when you're downloading the program. It's okay to keep the board in your hand, take a picture with it, selfie with it, doesn't matter. But when you are using it with electric signals and if you are keeping it in your hand, you can see I have a ring finger, I have a ring on my finger. So I can easily cause shorts to some of the pins, even a bit of weight hands. I'm sitting on a chair with my legs on top. Uh, so it may cause me to induce some static electricity onto it. I may cause minimum shorts or simple issues when uploading the programs into it. Best way is to simply keep it on a desk and then download it. If you must hold it in your hand, doesn't matter. I don't know, you may be sitting in a situation when there is a furnace or there is a press and you just have to download something and put it in. Hold it like this, okay? Hold it on the edges. There is no harm in touching the edges or the cross section of the PCB over here. But avoid holding or touching directly the metallic solder joints on the bottom. These are some of the common issues that uh, you face or you may face when using Arduino and the ways to mitigate it as well. Thanks for watching this video.